Hi, Michael. Hey there. How are you? Hey, hey. Michael. Hey, Gail. I just got to do my Zoom picture doesn't shine up. You've got the best Zoom picture. What? You've got the best Zoom picture. Right now? No. No, your, your painting thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I don't have my paintings. That's annoying. Thank you. Hey, Miriam. Okay. <laughs> So Gail, you know you're on for minutes, right? I do. Great, thank you. I have a template all called up, ready to go. Love it. I, um, I had some edits for Nate. Is he gonna be here tonight? I would assume so. Okay, good. I got them late to him, so we can just go over them today. Sure. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Oh, and here he is now. Speak of the devil. Yeah. Hey Nate. Hey Nate. Hello. How are you? Doing well. Oh, good. Glad well, you're here. Good. No COVID. Oh, you're on school vacation week again. Indeed. Again? It yeah, happens. They, break, <laughs> they have two one week breaks. Um, so, and this is the second half. <laughs> More actually like spring. So. Yeah. How old are your kids? They are 11 and 13. So I've got a fifth grader at Shutesbury Elementary and a seventh grader at the middle school. Got it. That fun middle school experience. That's been okay. It's been all right. That's good. That's no. good. <laughs> it's it's an interesting changes. transition. Yeah, going down the hill is a whole different ball game. So what did DC have? Because your kids are old enough, like they were in school when you were in DC, right? What kind oh, yeah. of vacations? Where is it one or two? Oh goodness. Um it was definitely one. Yeah. But I yeah, I thought it was just a week um in the spring. So you know why you know why Patriots Day is Patriots Day, right? Um it's, it's for the marathon. I'm to allow the marathon. Yeah, so, yeah. Can, so everyone can go to the marathon or pay attention to it or whatever. Yeah. Hey Zoe. Hi. Hey Zoe. Hey. Hi, everybody. That's an impressive background. Books and jars of herbs. That's fine. Oh yeah. Th these are all cookbooks. Whoa. Oh. That's impressive. Yeah, that's how much we like to cook. So here's a question. Like, I have a big collection of cookbooks. I don't cook as much as I used to, but like my kids, they have I've gotten them some cookbooks, but they're like, we'll just look it up online, you know. Yeah. And and there's many things you can't find online, but that's sort of the attitude of like, why would I get a book? Yeah. It's a very interesting thing. So you can get the pages covered in, in all the food that you cook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my kids don't appreciate my old, you know, antique vintage uh, moose wood cookbooks. <laughs> they don't, oh. That it's I learned how to, yeah. that, that I learned how to cook using. <laughs> yeah. Not only do I have food stains on my moose wood, but I have like mold from like, it's sitting in boxes <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I think we're complete because Leslie's not with yep. us anymore. So no guests, no public. She's, uh, do, she's doing a taxes, she said, right? This was tax, <laughs> this was tax day, I recall. <laughs> well, I'll call us to order at 704. And uh how is Graham, how are you? You're sort of very, very well. How's everyone? Good, 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 cool. 
So I don't think this is, we'll, we'll see how much we talk, but it's not a very full agenda. So um, unlike other ones who are scrambling. So there's no public as far as we could tell. Um, so old business, I think there's just some status updates that I'm aware of, but um, if you all have others to add. Um, I have no idea where community choice aggregation is. I'm feeling like it's not going to happen because um, probably like two weeks ago, I reminded Becky and then I emailed Becky and Donna. I just got off the phone with Donna, but talking about something else. And I feel like there was, I mean, the DPU lawyer emailed and said, you know, have your attorney connect with me. So like someone raised their hand at DPU and said, I'm the person to talk to. And for whatever reason, Donna has, it. I don't know if Donna's tried. Um, so I'm not sure where it is. So I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed, but it feels like uh, the two parties that have to talk haven't talked. Graham. How about we just put it on the, um, the warrant as uh, subject to attorney general review, which in a way that's by default, everything is true anyhow, or DPU review. And then if it passes, the DPU has to say no to it. And that's fine. You know why uh, they won't <laughs> because they won't right. because they haven't said no to anyone else. So that's interesting. Yeah. So I probably should just ask Rita. Just put it in, say subject yeah. to uh, subject to um, final approval. And then I guess we could just take it off. I'm um, just knowing the um, the rhythm of the select board. Like we're in the middle of April. I think we got a month until it probably has to get mailed out. Like it has to get mailed out two weeks before, which means probably beginning of May. So I'll talk. I'll send Rita an email because I know Rita's reading emails. But um, if you can't even put in a warrant item sub until you've heard from town council or them having a different conversation that you're not in control of. Right. Yeah. And just make it um, subject to, you know, and yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and, uh, so. and yeah, and stuff gets pulled. I mean, I think the only, you know, there's always people who have opinions on it, but I'll, I think it's a good idea. So, yeah. and, and, and if, if the, if, if it's been bagged by the time town meeting happens in what June, then, um, then it's, uh, you know, the, the, the moderator yeah. just says this one's moot. You know? Right, exactly. So, Michael, you're going to talk to Rita about the feasibility of putting on the warrant or a good yeah. request? Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. And uh, I can also, when I communicate that, I can also share that, you know, having Donna talk to her would be helpful. I just remind her, like, that's the, ac that's the action that needs to occur. Um, yeah, you so, might want to, you might not want to make it contingent if it if it'll if it blocks the warrant item getting in there so right you know yeah no i just don't, I don't add a contingency that's not no necessary. it's more the roadmap of like yeah, yeah. you know like this, this is how we get there okay so Good. that's a great idea um so the mvp grant i guess i'm realizing there's some stuff i don't know so the last week i, I don't have an update since last time i mean basically i think it's in becky's court um you know i did anyone else Go to the library presentation last week. They, oh, I didn't see you there. Huh. Yeah, okay. there. Okay, you should have said hello online. <laughs> oh, you're online. Okay, yeah. got it. Um, because it's clear that you know solar is going to be a major part of this thing. So, um, and if they're if they're truly worried about the finances and not being able to afford it, then that makes sense. And I think they'll have all the specs. So. I think at this point, it's just in Becky's hands to sort of make sure that the application goes in and she gets all the, you know, the data and gets specced out from the, the architects and such. So Wait, wait, wait. So what grant are you talking about then? The MVP. And is that for the library or for the school? The library. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, I, I guess I, I thought I mentioned this last time. So what, what in talking to Rita and Becky about the two options that we had, you know, sort of got presented. Um, there was merits to both, but I think where they came down was they wanted to do solar as a project. And the feedback from Andrew at the MVP was they preferred solar in this okay. case, because it was the, the point is you have to start the permitting process 
before you can apply, you don't have to finish it. And so the fact that the, the process started with the library was good. They like solar, they like concrete definitive kind of projects. Right. Um, and what Becky and Rita expressed was that there was concern that with rising costs for construction, that although the town was committed to solar, something might have to give. And so if, if that was gonna be the case financially, that this is the best way to make sure that solar gets on the roof. So, how much do you think, Michael, that's going to be for the library? Like, how, I, I they, think I remember, like 200, 300? 250 is what um, Rita and Becky floated. So, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen like, you know, the, the grant of 250 for the library? For the, for the MVP uh, yeah. solar, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Is the whole thing eligible? Like all the... I think the whole array on the roof. The arrays, everything, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So that's where it stands. So I haven't I haven't heard anything from Becky about it, but where we left it was she's got the information and she's got the relationship with the so that library had been, architects. The application's been made. No, it's due. I don't. It's due in May, I think. Sometime in May, I forgot okay. the deadline. Um, so we're not there yet, but um, I don't expect. I mean. Becky could always call and say, I need help. But at this point, I'm not expecting that I'm going to be part of it. Um, and then the only other new business, um, old business I'm aware of is that I was going to pull you guys and see about your interest in staying on next year. Um, so we got Leslie's determination. And so I know Graham and Zoe, you guys are on the fence. And I don't know if Nate, Miriam, Gail, if you changed your mind. But um, I guess I'll start with the yeses. Nate, are you still up for it? Yeah, I'm still for it. Okay, Miriam? Yeah. And Gail? Yes. And how about the fence sitters? Either way. Um, good. I'm I, I, I'm off the fence and and <laughs> and out of the and, and out of the community. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I you know I'm a holdover from the energy committee and uh um and um and uh and yeah, I've actually in the year that I've been with you guys, I've evolved on on um on uh, you know, on, on a belief that uh, that um, uh, one percent of Shrewsbury probably could be photovoltaic, I now think that um, that that's not a uh, not a realistic. Uh, uh, even though we we use eleven percent for other human uh, stuff, um, I think that that's probably not maybe not even a good idea because you mean for uh, rooftop when you say one percent. Uh, one percent of of uh, footprint. Uh, the town, we 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 humans, um, you know, the one percent of our town is roads. Uh, oh, I see. Right see. of ways, for instance, and four percent is water uh, mm -hmm. from you know, Atkins and uh, and the um, and um, the, the big uh, um, uh, Quabbin. <laughs> so so um, so that's part of the eleven percent. You know, four percent. Uh, um, and houses and yards are a lot, but um, uh, it would take one percent to uh, uh, one percent additional because we've got you know a quarter of a percent with the thirty acres or whatever that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but in any case, um, I, I think that uh, even even though um, uh, you know I like forests, um, uh, and um, um, but I've realised that we actually have to solve our consumer uh, we, we can't just replace the energy system that says we can use infinite amounts of energy um, and um, so so I'm not sure what committee in town that means I should join but uh, but it's um, but it's not to um, not to increase um, power production right now so so anyhow um, therefore um, I'm sticking with broadband and <laughs> Well, that's a I, good thing. I don't know um, if I understood what you were saying, Graham, but okay. Oh, okay. Um, I, it's all I, right. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm no longer convinced that we should do a 1% of the town as solar uh, because okay. that, that, would that would provide all the power that we needed um, if we all had uh, heat pumps and electric cars. Yeah. But I'm not, um, but I, I think what that did it, uh, where did that suggestion come from? I was that oh that that is that is a that is a ballpark estimate by um uh I I, I derived that from um uh from the West Hampton um a comparable um uh system set up designed by the extension services at UMass uh, for oh, West Hampton. Oh, I think what Mirror's asking is we didn't we didn't we didn't adopt we, that as a goal. 
Did oh, we? no, no, never yeah. did. No way yeah, there. Yeah. No, no. Well, I, 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 that, I, we're not, that's not a reason to quit. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, my, my, re, my reason for being enthusiastic about that a year ago, uh -huh. um, but, um, but less enthusiastic now yeah. as well, it's not a viable solution anyhow. Well, Graham, let me ask you, but you're still on the committee, yes? You still want to be uh, no, on the I'm committee? No, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to seek reappointment, no, okay. yeah, because I'm not sure, thing. I'm not sure of any point that I can, um, that, yeah. that I bring to this then. Well, I do, I mean, I totally respect that, but I think when we talk about, like, other ideas, it would be interesting at the end of the meeting to talk about stuff, because there's nothing that's limiting us from saying, how do we reduce consumption in town? Right. Like we haven't had that conversation. Right. Um, so that's definitely something right. we should pick up. Right. We don't have meeting. to, we, we don't, we, you know, we, we have other priorities we can expand on. Energy production, energy use. Energy use, but yeah. You know. Yeah. So um, we can say, we can save that conversation because I think that's part of what I want to figure out. But Zoe, what part of the fence are you on? I have also fallen off the fence and <laughs> <laughs> into um, needing to focus on on the farm and um, feeling like my skills are best used elsewhere. Hmm. Well, we've loved having you. Not that you're off the hook until June 30th, but yeah. it's totally... I'm totally Sorry, appreciate that. Going. That's good for you, but we'll miss you. That's too yes. bad for us. Yes. Well yeah. said, Gail. That's what I meant to say. So, and uh, uh, no, it's yes, been a fun, miss a fun and interesting year. So, um, <laughs> I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed the discussions with yeah. that. Yeah. So, is there any other old business that you guys have that I don't have on our list? So, there's only. In terms, if we shift gears to new business, there's one idea that Nate floated, and I, I remind you. So it, this harkened back to maybe 15 years ago, a town meeting. Um, Nate said, "How about we look at wind deployment and put up a turbine?" Oh, no. <laughs> oh that's really funny. Yeah, let's go back. That oh, is a really that's a good throwback. Yeah. So I told I, I said I'll tell you the story about that what I said in the email, but I had the same reaction that you guys did. It was so, fun. It was those. It might it might sell differently now though. It it could. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it might have sold differently back then, but yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so so Nate, so when Becky did try to get a grant to put a wind turbine up, I think it was behind town hall. Mm -hmm. And it was an animated town meeting highlighted for me at least by someone who walked in with a a rotor like a, a, a rotor that he dragged up on the stage and it had bullet holes in it and said yeah. that this was going to be a target for teenagers with guns <laughs> like no. teenagers with guns yeah. so my favorite my, i think the, the other really great part is that russ wilson made a really impassioned speech where he said you know because I guess he was just talking about climate change. I don't know if there was a current event that was bad, but he said, if we can't do this, this is the least we should be able to do is put up a wind turbine. So he made a great speech on the other side, but um, needless to say, it didn't go anywhere. We had, it was one of our early controversies. <laughs> yeah. We, we did have a balloon up in the air, I remember for a while though, behind. Yeah, they had to do a study. There was a cool the balloon. Study or something. <laughs> the constant noise would be a disturbance to the neighborhood. No. Infrasound was going to like what caused brain cancer or something. So we could consider it. We just have to know it has a history. Yeah, you know, I wasn't um, trying to be funny, but I, you know, <laughs> we focused a lot on solar and it's kind of the pros and cons there. And I was wondering if there, for Shootsbury, if there had ever been a site suitability analysis, right? And it yeah. sounds like that, I mean, I, I do know now that that did occur because I was looking at the, you know, the older energy committee's website and, you know, there's a, a pretty cool analysis from 2009. And I, I just wanted to like, just to maybe to refresh people's memory because it's all new to me. Um, <laughs> Can you send that to us? Maybe yeah, like to I'm just it. gonna really quickly, um, let me see if I can find the right, 
screen to share. Um, you know, I might, I might just have to email it to us. Yeah, or you can share it. Yeah, I'm just gonna um, call it my. Um, Graham, were you on the committee then? The no, committee? no, I, no, and uh, I, I think there weren't many. I recall there weren't many windy places in town. Yeah. Can you also see this? Yeah. Sing it. Yeah, so um, this is like well over 10 years ago, but um, you know, my assumption, my just background going into this is understanding that in the, the Northeast, apart from offshore and in certain specific Western parts of the state, there's generally not a good financial return on turbines just because of the amount of um, you know power there is to um, to yield from a turbine um, it's just not not as windy as the open high plains for example but um, at least this analysis at the time and I can I'll scroll up to the beginning um, so everyone can see this but this is a energy audit report it's um, oh it was my done. Goodness. 2009, um, oh, Center for that. Ecology Technology. Um, and which website, what homepage is this? How'd you find it? Yeah, this is on, this is a live link to the PDF on the Energy Committee. So it's archive so from a, the inactive committee oh. um, section of the website. Okay. Um, and yeah, basically the takeaway from the analysis was that Town, neither town hall nor the school are good sites um, for a you know a smaller turbine, uh, in part because of property abutment, um, and uh, they sort of allude to you know resistance that that neighbors might have. But they did suggest that um, there are there may be sites north of town hall where you could put a hundred kilowatt capacity um, turbine that would power all five municipal buildings, which is one of our goals for solar. Um, it just seemed to dovetail nicely with that. But I, you know, I, it, it was seen to me that there, this must, this report must have generated a conversation at the time. Um, and the decision was that it was like not a viable, um, idea. However, you know, as Gail, as you allude to, um, you know, public sentiment may have shifted. And then one thing's for sure is the technology has absolutely changed um, in, in 10 years, just in um, turbine engineering, um, you know, as well as the costs and trade-offs and whatnot. But I, I just want to, it just seemed like something that um, with this iteration of the Energy Committee, Energy and climate action, that it was something that we should at least like talk about. So I just I found this and I wanted to, to share it because I thought it was intriguing. Um, but yeah, I and, I, and I, it I, is, Matt, I don't think we want to close you down. It's just yeah, yeah, that, yeah. you know, it's the it's the uh, the melodrama of town. Oh history. yeah. It sounds like quite a quite a meeting. And, uh, and and I think it's better. I see twelve point five year payback, and it's probably got better than that um, because of what you said the uh, the improvement in in no, designs and stuff. But twelve point five year payback on half of the amount um, that still speaks to the thing that one should be really putting a scarce resource, which is the turbine or our capital, in a place that has like a three year payback for the whole amount. Because I'm sure that a turbine could, well, probably five year payback is probably very realistic in a in a in an optimal windy place, um, um, and so that's that's where I think capital like that should be put. I don't I don't think Shutesbury's got anywhere that's that windy. So yeah, do you? I don't I don't know, Nate, if you uh, in your research figured this out, but it seems like. If we wanted to go down this path, the the first step would be getting some entity like CET to you know did it 
in 2009 to do it again, to sort of do an analysis, um, if there's change in technology, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I mean, it seems like that would make sense because once we, you know, you know, so one of, this is a jumping the gun a little bit, but what I would like to do sometime after town meeting, if maybe during the summer, if not like September, is re-engage with the FinCom about this. Like I saw AJ at the library meeting and I was gonna grab him then, but you know, they're in the midst of the budget season. So no one wants to talk about anything else. Um, but I think it just, all these things raise the issue of, we can't do any exploration because we can't pay for any studies to give us the facts to make a solid recommendation. Like it's sort of, we're stuck in this loop where it's conceptually an interesting idea, but then you need some facts to, to sort of go the next step. And if we don't have town money to do it, then we have to go for grant money and then we have to wait for the opportunity for a grant and all that kind of stuff. So it speaks to sort of getting some kind of town funding to advance some of these ideas. Um, I don't know if you guys, if you all agree with that, but it seems like that's the next step would to have some validation of what, if it's viable. Yeah. What is the highest point in town uh, with the belief that the highest point is going to get the, the best wind? Like where the cell tower is. Where the, yeah. Pretty pretty close to that, you're right. Yeah, and it's and it's not open terrain, right? It's all wooded. Yeah. Well, except for yeah. the cell tower. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the abutters there are already not happy there's a cell tower, so. Yeah. It's, 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 but the windmill on top of the tower. <laughs> you had a perfect place for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's the all, you know, what's interesting is that you could, uh, it's, well, I, I don't know. I mean, no, it's not a good idea. I was just thinking down the hill near the Quabbin, but you got all, you got the hill of Sheetsbury blocking the downhill slope so it's going to not be windy even though there's the expanse of the quabbin um like peter sam would get good has good potential because they got water going over the quabbin right. and hitting the east side well i think uh you know looking at other um strategies including you know efficiency and conservation energy conservation is a good idea and you know some of these technologies are going to improve in the coming years and maybe it'll become viable for everybody to have a solar roof or yeah. solar windows yeah. you know there's going to be all sorts of things coming out so nate since you're i mean so number one thank you for raising it because i mean i think we should just like keep looking at things and you're doing that which is great so um do you feel like there's a, a logical next step you'd want us to sort of consider or is it sufficient at this point to sort of consider it among various options? Um, I'd like to dig a little bit further into it. Um, you know, I mean, there's um, there's clear direction from just the state government in terms of priorities and it's um, how people are thinking about getting to net zero by 2050. Um, and onshore wind, I don't think is a huge part of that. I mean, as I was kind of looking into it, um, it really is the offshore developments where the attention focuses. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, maybe dig a little bit more. Um, I don't think there's a particular action item, but I did send this 2009 report uh, to the committee. Um, just, I think it's it's very interesting to pick through, um, and you know, as we're looking for, you know, ideas for you know, kind of the kinds of things that we would want to tackle as a committee. Um, it, you know, there may be ideas ideas in that report that, you know, maybe we haven't thought of, and this this may be just one example of that. Um, but yeah, maybe no action item at the at the moment. Okay, Gail. Yeah. When the Green Communities guy was here last time, did he make it clear that there are no grants for uh, studies at all for consultants? Um, 
if that's the case, are the audits different? Could we see if there is a, an audit parallel to this from 2009 that's there now? We thought we asked for an energy audit and we were told after the fact that the audit was only for weatherization, that it was not for energy use. So could we ask specifically, can they do an energy audit for solar, I mean, for um, wind? This, specifically. Who, who's the they? They, uh, who did this study? The, the sta it was a state. The, this one's CET, which is a nonprofit. But CET yeah. was put it's on board by what? Green Communities probably, or DE. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, in 2009, they were doing mass save. So they were looped in. I don't know if they still do mass save. Right. So CEB is the, is the company that was hired to do the actual analysis, but it would have been um, Mass DEP or, or DOER or? I don't know. I'm, well, I think, I mean, it could have been CET that did it, you know, because they're, they're they were a mass save vendor. So like they would go into your house and do mass right, save. Right. And it, but but I'm thinking that some state agency is the one who contracted to actually do it, like this energy audit for the weatherization. Oh. We went to DOER, who contracted with Joe Schmo's organization, whoever it was, to actually do the analysis. Maybe. I don't know. Does it say how it was created in the report? Like who? Well, we could ask DOER directly. Do they do energy audits for wind? Um, I, 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 no, I just Googled, um, there are um, mass, uh, Massachusetts GIS wind maps, um, so one can find exactly where the high winds are. They're not necessarily the high point, highest points either. The winds have right. some very, very idiosyncratic uh, behaviors. Yeah, because you get valley yeah. swoops yeah 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 we well, odd things but anyhow the, so it is it is possible to see where the energy where the wind energy density is in Shrewsbury mm -hmm. if uh, if we were so inclined um okay and and that's on what kind of website i just googled it it uh, says mass gis data um okay. modeled wind speed grids so grids of the state i guess showing what's um what's there I would develop just... de developable winds, they say. Developable, developable. It's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> developable. So I get. I guess what I'd say is, Nate, if you wanted to go a little bit deeper and just you know let me know, and we can put it back on the agenda and then figure out if there's huh. a pathway. Um, so that makes sense. So thank you for bringing it up because yes, we, we should we should look at everything. Um, so before we go to so just a, a little bit of a broader conversation, if we can do minutes. Um, so Nate sent the minutes out for the March meeting and it sounded like Miriam had some comments, but does someone just want to move to consider the minutes for March 20, uh, 2023? I'll move. I'll move to consider them. Okay. Second. Second. Great. Okay, discussion, Miriam. Um, do you want me to just screen share my sure. comments? Can I? Sure. Yeah. Gonna give me. All right. It was just the discussion when I was talking about the bylaw, and I wanted to make sure that um, you know it was kind of makes sense. Um, so the stuff in yellow is what I was thinking about. Is um, and I don't know if I made this point clearly enough at the meeting, but by it said something like bylaws can be more strict. They actually are supposed to be more strict. Otherwise, they're invalid because you would default to the state law. So right. they, if they're not more restrictive, then you don't need them. And why would you have them? Um, so that was, I thought, a point, that language. And then down here, I don't know if I changed. Regulations are passed because I think you said may be passed. Um, so they are just as a point. I think that's important. And then. Did I change this or I think I, I didn't change this, the bylaw regulations, maybe you. Wait, 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 what does that say? If towns don't articulate scientifically grounded. Grounded bylaw. I think you, I think he may have said bylaw and I said bylaw regulations. 
Those are two different things. Yes. I guess it's you, so you're, to, you're talking about the regulations. Yeah, this was think, what I was talking about in the meeting was that if the regulations are not science, you know, articulated in a, in a scientifically grounded way, then if there's a bylaw, a challenge, um, you may not be able, it may not prevail in court. Yeah. Because I think what Gail's saying is that bylaw regulations are two different things. So it's sort of like the regulations stemming Scratch from the bylaws. bylaws. If towns don't articulate scientifically grounded regulations. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Challenges okay. can lead to a revision to the more permissive state standard bylaw. No, it's not a state standard bylaw. It's a state standard law. It's the Wetlands Protection Act. So why don't we just say that? The more yeah. permissive Laws. state law. Permissive state law. Yeah. Bingo. That, yeah. that yeah. makes sense. And then um, here, I just said, um, I don't remember what the original language was, but that we'll be drafting a document and looking for public comment, including from ECAC. Um, and then it may be necessary to revise the bylaw itself, but that's a more involved process. That's not what I was kind of, we're talking at least last week, last month, that's what we were talking about. Okay. So a question. Yes. The minutes are to reflect the discussion or the conversation of the presentation at the meeting. But this does not, this, your remark at this point will be drafting was not met with rebuttal or discussion. So is not included in the minutes. I, I don't understand the point. There's no chase place in the minutes appropriately to talk about this statement. I thought this was, I, I, I don't have the original in front of me. And I, what yeah. did you have in it, in my um, name? Oh. What's I've got it here, so I could look. Uh, because um, my recollection was that I was explaining to ECAC that we were going to be looking for public comment, including inviting comment from ECAC. Correct. Yeah. But that's so, what that says right here. Right. And then um, the next sentence, I don't yeah. remember what no, the original that, That's basically the same. What the original says is, the CONCOM will draft a document on regulations. It may be necessary to revise the bylaw itself. So I don't think it's you're creating anything new. It just seems I don't like think I am creating anything new here. Oh. I, it's just, it's just a couple of tweaks. There were a couple of tweaks. Mm -hmm. yeah. The second sentence is essentially the same. And the yeah. first sentence is just so a little actually, bit more. Actually, this is not, I didn't change this. It's highlighted, but I didn't change it. Yeah. So. Anyone else have any thoughts about? Um, is that um, is that are those changes okay? Absolutely. Okay. Do you want? Do you have these, Nate? You've got them in the document. I, I do. Yeah. I I just made okay. those adjustments that we just discussed. And I can. Okay. I yeah. will stop yeah. screen sharing. Thank Great. you. Any other comments on the minutes? Okay. So I'll just do the roll. So Miriam. Aye. Graham. Aye. Zoe. Aye. Gail. As amended, aye. Nate, thank you. Aye. Yes. And, and I'm an aye. Thank you, Gail, for that clarification. <laughs> okay. So the last part, and this is to be as long or as short as we want, was I just want to, like, it seemed like we, we've done a bunch of stuff um, and talked about, you know, CCA, we talked about solar, we brought people in, we've sort of done this stuff. And at this point, I was thinking, well, where do we, where, what are our next steps? Where are we going from here? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and we're, we're sort of in like, it's not quite the end of the fiscal year, but, you know, <clears throat> we might have new members and, you know, there usually is a little bit of a lull in the summer. So, like, figuring out, okay, we've, we've done this stuff. Do we, we may or may not move forward with CCA. So if we don't, that might continue on. Um, the MVP project for the grant 
is converting into the you know the solar thing on the library, which is will be a good thing. But that's it's sort of it's got a trajectory. Um, some of the other stuff we talked about um, is it's unclear, like the regenerative stuff. We don't have a plan for that. Storm water, there may be bylaws, there might be regulations, but there's nothing you know that that we as a committee would be doing. There's the issue. Well, that, is that you know, true though? Well, I don't know. I'm I'm just going through it, and then we can. I think we should go back. I I, I think we should go back to our working group minutes. There were um you know there were action steps and recommendations from on invasive species. I think. Yeah. Right. Stormwater and you know I wonder if we could solar see what we can and solar. I wonder if there's some things we can pull out from those. Oh things. yeah, I mean it's definitely things from those working groups. Um, and we can just sort of I mean that that might be the way to go to say. Things were identified in those three working groups, which we collectively prioritized. We should figure out how to move those forward. Um, that's probably the, got the most integrity to our process. Um, you know, and there's something like Graham raised about, you know, do we want to include looking at reducing energy consumption, which, you know, that I don't think that was part of MVP or the hazard mitigation plan. It was sort of, um, so it's really an open question, you know. As we think about the next six months to a year, what makes sense? I definitely think um, I agree with that observation. We've focused a fair amount on reacting to climate change and also sort of um, supply side thinking. Um, but you know, we could put up solar panels and put in a wind turbine. And still next winter, there will be giant tanks of oil going back and forth um, you know, in front of my house. Um, and you know, crushing demand for fossil fuels is, is really where it's at, um, I think. And I would, I would like to have some creative thinking around how, I mean, you know, if we're going to get to 2050, um, net zero, that largely means um, people are not burning oil to heat their homes in the wintertime. Uh, and they probably should be burning less wood as well. Um, so uh, those are like some of the avenues that I it would be good to think about and at least start talking about a little more seriously. So one article that I've forwarded around was um, you know, this program that's popping up in libraries around the state where people are loaning out um, induction cooktops. Oh, right. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Familiarizing, you know, people becoming familiar, familiar with the new technology before, you know, committing to anything. Um, and I think that sort of activity um, smooths the glide path to a, um, you know, people burning fewer fossil fuels. I mean, I was really, I was genuinely surprised how much gas is used um, to cook in Shutesbury. Um, just, just with the knowledge that there aren't like pipes around, it, it surprised me. Um, so an induction does not get hot, is that right? It's uh, not, right? It's not, right? Yeah, it, it doesn't, yeah, it's not like the, you know, sort of the old style coil electric, electric yeah. stovetop, um, nor is it like sort of analogous um, glass topped um, right. convection. It, it's a kind of a different technology. It's a new thing. And in my opinion, an, an upgrade um, mm -hmm. from other ways of cooking that, that I've enjoyed. Because um, I also like to cook, but yeah, I reached out yeah, to me. We have one, and it's yeah, fantastic. I mean, nice. like boiling water like so fast and wow. just incredibly efficient. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. But you have to buy all new pans. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It works with cast iron, which a lot of people have. Oh, yeah. it doesn't work with stainless steel pans. No, it does not. Oh wow. Yeah, if you can stick a magnet to it, it'll it'll work. 
But that was just one idea. And Marianne is like, obviously an extremely busy person, but she <laughs> said that within a month or two, she could probably process um, something, you know, a sort of a kit to loan out through the library. For, for oh, that'd be to try Was that like you get a little burner to practice? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're like 120 bucks. That's um, crazy. They're, they're wicked cheap. Um, so when we, do you, when you talk to her, did she say that we'd have to find the money to buy it and then she could manage it? <laughs> I offered to buy it. You did. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yeah. So well, well, that was generous of you. Um, I think it was giving season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think stuff like that would be a great idea. And, you know, and it actually, you know, this is the case. Like I've struggled to figure out, like when Leslie and Zoe were talking about, like you know, how do we change lifestyle stuff? I think this is a really good example of like it. You can use the library to share an experience, so people can then make a you know a decision. Like it, it's very yeah. clear. Uh, so I think, you know, I don't know if we if we sort of just say yes, do it, or if we just sort of put it in our back pocket and say in the next couple of months we want to support this and. You know, why not now? I mean, what? Why well, I'm Nate's already it's... buying it. Let's say right. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, well, we could say yes, and then we could maybe augment it. I'm guessing there'd be demand. Like, there's going to be a waiting list for this thing. So, I mean, it could be just that, and then just sort of use that as an example to sort of go to the FinCom and select board and say we need some more money for more of these things. Mm -hmm. um, Gail. Suppose we ask Marianne what it would take from her point of view to make such a program work. If she were to have three or four units, say, to loan out, would she need purchase of the units? Would she need, uh, you know, what would she need to make it work from her point of view? And then say, okay, do we go to the FinCom? Do we go to uh, residents in town to under uh, pin it? Um, mm -hmm. So um, she needs time to, you know, create the item in the database to get the barcode on the device. Um, you know, it's that sort of processing of the item to prepare it to be loaned out. Right. That is sort of the the burden on her. So that's why I, um, yeah. Uh, so that's that part. So I, where we left things was, I was going to keep my eye on um, well-reviewed uh, cooktops that would okay. be that might might be a good fit for the program, and then um, run it by her before I hit hit buy. Like I was checking one out on Wirecutter, and it's extremely well-reviewed. It's about one hundred and twenty bucks. And um, yeah, I'm I'm happy to like to start up this program, but I, I agree. Like if if there is like a waiting list, then maybe there's a way to you know leverage the town or somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So and and yeah, there, I'm yeah. sure. Well, I for one, I'm sure there are others who would be volunteer to uh, do the data entry for barcodes and that kind of thing to take the paperwork off her plate. Grab, and then, then there'll have to be something written, like for the kayaks that, that people sign out. You yeah. know, it'll have to say something to the effect of, you know, we won't let our we won't let children, um, you know, boil water with this sort of thing. I mean, it'll just it yeah. just has to be a one page thing of, right. of them taking responsibility for um, not injuring anyone. I only have one burning question, which is, oh, no, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> How is it going to fit into the book drop? <laughs> I, I missed it. How are you going to fit what? Into, into the, the book drop, drop oh. when you return it. <laughs> uh, no, no. So, well, it seems like we're in support of moving forward. Yeah. Um, there are probably some legal questions, too, in terms of vulnerability. Yeah. I think yeah. Well, it has to, it has to have a way 
It couldn't be more hazardous than a kayak. It could not possibly be more <laughs> a lot safer as long as they don't use it in. There's a lot of safety issues in, with kayaks. Yeah, as long as they don't use it in the kayak, probably that would be the. You know. <laughs> so, so Nate, I would say, why don't you talk to Marianne and then just swoop us in next month and see what the deal is, and we can sort of work on leveraging the town once it's moving forward. Sounds um, great. I had some other idea that you reminded me of, and I just forgot what it was. Um, but I had, a, yeah, go Zoe. Um, that reminded me of something, which is um, we at the farm got a grant recently for a methane, um, a biogas, biodigester. Um, and so we're going to install that on June 4th. Wow. Um, and it's going to be what our farm interns will cook with. Um, and so the idea is that we're going to have a kind of open um, work day workshop set up on June 4th. Um, so people who are interested in the technology can come and, and see what it takes to, to set one up. Um, it's a, it's a prefab, um, it's called the home biogas. Um, and, um, but the person who I'm working with, um, who helped me get the grant, um, Elisa Cirilli, um, she runs the Northeast biogas initiative. Um, and mm -hmm. she's just trying to bring biogas to this area. She's setting one up at UMass. Um, she set one up at Sirius. Um, so she's just trying to increase the network of, of people who have them and, and spread the word about the technology. Um, How does and, it work? Yeah, you feed, um, a, uh, there's a feeding tube that you feed with uh, organic matter, food scraps or poop. Um, and then it's an anaerobic digestion, um, inside this big sack. This is the style that we have there. There are multiple styles, but, um, and then, so it's, it's completely filled with, with the, what you fed it and also water. Um, there's no air and then it ferments and produces methane. And then the methane gas rises and it, it gets, you know, passively just pushed um, out uh, a tube that you can hook up to a stove. Wow. Um, and so we have, we're getting um, a size that that is going to be able to provide like two hours of cooking fuel a day. Um, and, and we'll just use the horse manure and mm. food scraps from the garden and um, also, you get this incredible um, effluent, this uh, fertility out the other end, um, which is uh, you can just use directly on your vegetable beds or we're going to pour it on our compost to help break down um, woody material in there. So mm. it's I'm, I haven't used it yet. I, I'm still like, what? What is this thing? Um, but I'm excited to, to use it. And I feel like our having it could be um, uh, a way of, of spreading the word about it. Mm -hmm. well, I have a suggestion. And then mm -hmm. you know, so if you do, if you made a handout and you brought it to town meeting, which is on June 3rd, there might be mm. people who actually read it and then come on June 4th to check it out. Oh yeah. Okay. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, that was my suggestion. Get it on the agenda for the public town meeting and say, tomorrow I'll come to our place and see blah, blah, blah. But yours even better, Michael. They have a handout that you can do both. Yeah. Or posters. The very next day. Cool. Okay. Or do posters if you don't have to hand things out. You just have a poster. Mm -hmm. You can have a picture. Poop into flame. Call the cow. Yeah. Uh, the 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 woman who I'm working with she calls it a, a dragon like it's a it's this baby dragon that you feed and it makes 
flame and poops and cow farts. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love, it. Love it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, guys, I'm going to have to sign off at eight. I just want to give you a heads up. I've cool. Gotta... Well, that's good. Well, I good mean, not that, you're, not that you're leaving, but it's good timing. Um, I think I mean, we, this could be an ongoing conversation. But any other ideas on top of mind for now, or should we wrap up and just continue the conversation another time? Wrap up. When do we next meet again? Uh, in May. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, um, let's see. One, two, three. So that would be the 16th of May. Tuesday, May 16th. Yeah. Does that work for everybody? Same time, same station. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Anyone want to move to adjourn? That was the 16th? One, six. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Anyone want to move to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay. Okay. All in favor, Gail. Aye. Miriam. Aye. Nate. Aye. Graham. Aye. Zoe. Aye. And I'm an aye. Okie dokie. See you guys in a month. Bye. See ya. Thank you, Michael. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.